Welcome to the second Sunday of Easter. Uh, there are seven Sundays of Easter, in case you didn't know, and uh, there, that's one more than Lent, so we aren't putting those Easter hymns away yet. So I invite you to worship God and join me responsively in our greeting. Your words will be on the bottom of the screen. Blessed be the God of our Savior Jesus Christ. God has given us a new birth in the living hope of the resurrection. God has given us an inheritance that is imperishable and unfading. In this we rejoice, even when we suffer trials. For although we have not seen Jesus, we love him. And although we have not seen him, we believe him. For the outcome of our faith is the salvation of our souls. Let's join together in singing, Christ the Lord is risen today. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the glorious Resurrection Day. We thank you that we're meeting together here on a Sunday, the first day of the week, the day when we remember you rose from the dead. And so, Lord, you will see us through the dark times and you will throw your, your resurrection light upon us. We thank you for this day that you have made and we thank you for all days, but especially this day we can come together and worship you. We may be apart physically, but together we come at different times and different places to worship. May you indeed inhabit the praises of your people. May we feel that, may we feel your touch, may we know your embrace, and may you be glorified. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, amen. A reading from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Peter writes, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, 
He has given us new birth to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last times. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith, greater of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is God's word for us. Let us respond, first of all, in our silence. Amen. Peter writes and uses these words, an inexpressible and glorious joy. An inexpressible, something that is just so marvelous you can't find a way to get it out. There's no proper way to express it. It's just something that's so overwhelming, so wonderful, so amazing that it's too good for words, too good for expression. He says that joy is something that, that, that's inexpressible and glorious. I love this, th these words. An inexpressible and glorious joy. Well, maybe this is what he was talking about. Let's take a look at this video clip. Thank you so much as you remain standing there. Take our hymn book and let's turn to a great hymn, hymn number 20, How Great Thou Art. And let's sing it to the Lord's glory. As Brother Mark comes to lead us, hymn number 20. Do your very best. an inexpressible and glorious joy. And we watch the faces of the folks that are singing. They're singing, how great thou art. And, and I'm just wondering, why the disconnect? Are they really listening to the words? And when I think that God, his son not sparing, sent him to die, I scarce can take it in that on the cross, my burdens gladly bearing, he bled and died to take away my sin. And, and you know, we, we tend to sing this and look around and, and, and just wonder, you know, we don't even wonder what we're saying. We don't reflect on, on, on the words and we certainly don't remember or engage in who we're singing it to. You know, sometimes I wonder what happened to that inexpressible and glorious joy that, that perhaps we have taken the joy of resurrection and the, and the promise of eternal life when Christ shall come 
with shouts of acclamation and take me home. What joy shall fill my heart. Perhaps we've, we've taken that and we've replaced it with apathy and going through the motions and business as usual. You see, there's something that's inexpressible and glorious that Peter is writing about. He says that that there is an, an inexpressible and glorious joy which is a response to something that has happened. Joy is usually the response to something. So what is it that's happened that Peter says causes inexpressible and glorious joy? Well, we go back to the beginning, back to verses 3 and 4. This is the thing that has happened that brings about the glorious joy. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish. You see, Peter understands being lost. He understands what it's like with, with no place to go, and, 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 and he understands what it's like for no one to care for him and to care about him. And, and he knows what it's like to be found. That this thing that we celebrate, the resurrection of Jesus Christ, It's not just something we do on Easter and then pack it away. It's something that's cause for us to live our lives boldly. And we look forward to something that's going to happen. You see, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Peter says we've been given new birth into a living hope. If you're a golfer, that's a mulligan, another chance, a do-over. That through Jesus Christ and his resurrection from the dead, we have a chance to begin again. We have a chance to get it right this time. And this is, uh, you know, not only this, but it's not like it's a chance to get it right this time and then we're going to mess it up. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, we've been given new birth into a living hope that won't fade or perish. I don't know about you, but that's, cause for joy and knowing that because of Jesus there's something good that yet awaits for me and for you Christ has opened paradise we lost that paradise a long long time ago and we read it in the beginning when when we used to walk and talk with God in the cool of the day in a wonderful paradise And because we chose not to follow God's way and God's will, we chose to make ourselves the person that's in charge of our lives. We have sought to disobey God because we saw that the fruit was good and it would make good for food and it would make us like God. Adam eats and so in so doing exemplifies who all of us are, that we have rejected God that we then were sent out and God has found a way to get us back there. Now, you see, I, don't, I, I think one of the reasons why people are limited in their, in their joy, in their response, is they don't really understand themselves as being lost. And so, you know, we're, we're not we're okay. We're we're not that bad of people. How often have we heard someone say at a funeral, well, you know, she was a wonderful person. I never heard her talk about anything. Or he was always helping someone. If anybody deserves to go to heaven, that person, this person would go. You see, I really believe that we don't, think of ourselves as lost. And the scriptures are very clear that the best that's in us is garbage. 
compared to the holiness of God. Paul writes, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That we've lost something. And no matter how hard we try, we can't make it happen. You see, Peter writes about this inexpressible and glorious joy because Peter has been found. He understands that this resurrection brings another chance. It brings new birth, new hope, and a, and a new home. And God's found a way to bring us back. You see, God is in the finding business. I love those stories that Jesus tell. And Luke puts them all together in, in, his, uh, in his gospel. Those three parables of the lost things. And, and I love that last parable, the parable of the lost son. And we know that. We know it, but I'm going to just highlight it again. The youngest person in the family, the youngest son decides he doesn't want to stay home anymore. He doesn't want to be around the old man and, 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 and to, you know, get stuck living with everybody else and living in this place where nobody's going anywhere, nowhere fast. And so he decides to leave, he gets his inheritance, and off he goes, and we know he messes up and comes to his senses, makes his way home. And this is the part that I love. It switches to the perspective of the father. And and here's the man, the old man, with his robes, very dignified, has a place in society, and he looks down the road And he's not sure. He thinks, he thinks, could it be? And then it it, it dawns on on him. He realizes, that's my son. And what does he do? He doesn't stand there waiting with his arms crossed for his kid to get up, come, come home and go up to him and apologize and to give him a, see, I told you so. While he was a long way off, Jesus tells the story. He ran to his son. (laughs) I don't know about you, but old people, we don't run so well anymore. And and it's rather undignified to see an old person hurrying along, scuffling along. And, And here's this old man, robes flowing behind him, shuffling, making his way, running to his son. And when he gets there, he throws his arms around him, buries his face, into his shoulder and sobs, my son was dead, but now he's found, now he's alive. Jesus says there's something good about being found. There's something amazing also about finding someone. And he says, don't you understand, to the religious leaders that that objected to him, don't you understand what's going on? (laughs) People are finding their way home. The lost are being found. They're coming home. It's a time to rejoice. Rejoice with me at what God's doing. I want to show you a picture. This was a picture by Rembrandt. And this is what he um, depicted this story. It's called The Return of the Prodigal. Let's take a look at it. Now, as I, as I look at this painting... I see, you know, parts of the story. I know the story. And, and knowing the story, I see, well, there's the fatted calf being let out. There are the servants with the new clothes. There's the father. And look at the father. He, he seems rather dignified. And he's given a, yes, here's my son, but I, I, I don't see a lot of movement there. And, and the son certainly looks penitent. And not knowing any part of the story, I've used this uh, picture many times before, and I've asked folks, tell me, where do you see joy in this painting? Now, we know the story, and so people respond, well, the joy of the father, the joy of the son. And I said, if you didn't know that stuff, and what the name of this painting was, where would you see joy? Which one of these figures is expressing joy? And I often go down toward the bottom of the painting to the white dog. 
And to me, the dog is the one showing the joy in the picture. And, and sometimes we have our four-footed friends to remind us of what it means to possess and to distribute and, and to be involved and overcome by an inexpressible and glorious joy. Watch this short clip. We don't know you. Now, friends, that is an inexpressible and glorious joy. Sometimes we need our four-footed friends to remind us of a response of joy. The Apostle Peter writes these writes this letter writes these words to a church that is undergoing persecution that this is the kind of inexpressible and glorious joy that gets us through those times of trials testings those difficult times he says that even in the midst of suffering there is this inexpressible and glorious joy because joy doesn't originate with us It comes from God. Joy is the expression, the response of the future breaking into the present. And and the future that Peter is envisioning is this wonderful thing of being found and being brought home, getting back to paradise. Christ has opened paradise. Come home, come home. You see, resurrection brings new birth and and a reward that cannot be taken away. A place where there will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain. Resurrection and being found produces within us an inexpressible and glorious joy. Let's never forget that. Even in the humdrum of hymns, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, forgive us when we've held back, when we haven't thought of the wonderful thing that has happened, when we've viewed ourselves through our own eyes and not yours, when we thought we were okay without you. Forgive us for the times that we have shortchanged you in our praise and thanksgiving, when we have shortchanged you in our worship. And not only that, when we have diminished our joy in our service as well. Forgive us, Lord. Fill us with your Spirit, because, Lord, we know that it's the Spirit's job to let us know we are loved. And so love on us right now. Here we are, Lord. Thank you for your love, for your presence. Thank you for the joy of being lost and found. To you be praise and glory now and forever. Amen. Well, I invite you to uh, stop playing solitaire. I know how this works now. Uh, With this, uh, uh, using the internet and watching on the internet or whatever, you know, we can multitask and you can listen to messages and be in meetings and and, and over here you're playing solitaire on the computer. So let's put away the solitaire and let's get ready uh, to to join in in one of our favorite hymns. And uh, I invite you, don't, don't care who's around you right now. If you're watching with someone else, invite them to embarrass themselves as well. But let's join together and let's sing uh, Because He Lives. Oh. 
God sent His Son. They called Him Jesus. He came to love, heal and forgive. He lived and died to buy my benediction. Lord God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you for finding us. We thank you for being found. Lord, wrap your arms around us. Let us know your love and let us know the push to share that love. We thank you and praise you for the joy that we have of knowing you, but more importantly, being known by you. And now to you be all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Go now in the knowledge, the love, and the communion and fellowship from God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And God's people say, Amen. God bless you. God bless you real good. <laughs>